Hey, quick question. What if I told you there's an ECG pattern that can predict a massive heart attack before it even happens? Sounds crazy, right? But it's real. And if you miss it, your patient might walk out of the hospital feeling fine, only to collapse days later. This is Wellen syndrome, also called the Widowmaker warning sign. It's subtle, sneaky, and absolutely deadly if overlooked. Let's break it down. All right, so what exactly is Wellen syndrome? In simple terms, it's a critical ECG finding that tells us a patient is at high risk of an impending anterior wall MI. Why is it so deadly? Because it typically occurs in patients with significant left anterior descending artery stenosis. Yes, that's the artery responsible for supplying a big portion of the heart with oxygen. Here's the kicker. Patients with Wellens syndrome might look completely stable. No crushing chest pain, no obvious distress, they might just have mild discomfort or even feel fine. But their ECG is screaming danger. And if we ignore that warning sign, a massive heart attack is just around the corner. So how do we recognize this sneaky killer on an ECG? There are two types of Wellens syndrome. Type A, which accounts for 25% of cases, biphasic T waves in leads V2, V3. These are the early warning signs. And Type B, which accounts for almost 75% of cases. Deep, symmetrical T-wave inversions in V2, V3. This is the more advanced stage, and it's even scarier. Other key features you'll notice on the ECG. No ST elevation, which can make it easy to overlook. No significant Q-waves. And normal or minimally elevated cardiac enzymes, since we already know troponin T takes time to get in the circulation to be detected on blood test. But just because their enzymes are fine now doesn't mean their heart is fine. This is a ticking time bomb. Okay, let's get into the mechanics. What's actually happening inside the heart when we see Wellens syndrome? It all comes down to a blockage in the LAD. Initially, there's only a partial occlusion, which means blood is still flowing, but not enough to keep the heart muscle happy. This creates ischemia, which leads to those telltale T-wave changes on the ECG. But here's why it's so dangerous. These patients don't always have constant chest pain. Their symptoms can come and go, tricking both them and their doctors into thinking it's nothing serious. Because the artery isn't fully blocked yet, we don't see a full-blown STEMI on their ECG yet. If left untreated, that partial blockage can completely close off within days, leading to a massive anterior MIA widowmaker heart attack. That's why recognizing Wellens early is critical. Let's look at a real-world case. A 55-year-old male comes to the ER with mild chest discomfort. He's had some episodes of pain over the past two days, but right now, he feels fine. His ECG shows deep T-wave inversions in V2-V3. But here's what happens next. He's diagnosed with non-specific T-wave changes and sent home. No big deal, right? 48 hours later, he's back, but this time in full cardiac arrest. His LAD is 100% occluded a massive anterior STEMI. And the sad part? This was 100% preventable if his initial ECG had been recognized for what it was, a red flag screaming for urgent intervention. So, what do you do if you see Wellen syndrome on an ECG? Step one, do not stress, test this patient. Seriously, exercise stress testing can trigger a massive MI. Instead, here's the correct approach. Admit the patient immediately, no ifs, ands, or buts. Prepare for urgent coronary angiography. We need to see how bad the blockage is. The key takeaway? These patients need the cath lab, not a treadmill. Final warning. If you see Wellens on an ECG, treat it like a ticking time bomb because it is. Have you ever seen a Wellens ECG in real life? If so, drop a comment and let's discuss. And if you want to tell your STs from your Ts without like a math textbook, join our free course at ecgkid.com. Got hooked? We've got paid stuff too. Please consider subscribe, drop a like, and let's figure out these heartbeats together.